Okay, so there we go, that's all nicely dried now. Pretty smooth considering the temperatures we're working in, so obviously the old uh, flow improver is working. So this is really our first coat on. So as you can see, when you look at the tail here, far too strong. Underneath here, perhaps if you're going for really heavy weathering, you could leave it like it. But from our point of view, we want to make it somewhat faded back. I'm not a mass fan of over weathering and ripping things apart. So what we're going to do is just grab our airbrush and what we're going to do is just put a tiny bit of thinners in this okay so I've just got a drop of thinners in the bottom okay but coming back in with our paint again and we're just doing half a color cup here and we give this a mix up so it's quite thick um, compared to when that first coat went on that was very very thin but this one should be enough now just put a nice light misty coat over the top to take away some of that pre-shading, give us a bit of more thick colours, okay? To give us that sort of true uh, white coming through. So, first place we're gonna start is up here on these ailerons and flaps, because we wanna make them a little bit nicer. So we just take our flow, again, right over until it disappears. As soon as it disappears, stop. Same on these tail planes. As soon as it disappears, stop. Okay, back up here on this tail. Again, there it goes. So we're going to stop and the other side. Making sure, as we said before, you do the, the sides and edges and everything. Remember, when you're spraying as well, make sure you come slightly past where you want to go because otherwise what's going to happen is when you mask up you're going to sometimes get that little faded area and obviously you don't want that. Again, these tails. There we go. So then when we're looking back at these areas we can see it's just coming through just a little bit more which is absolutely fine. Just on there, just again, just over it, just to knock it back that final time. Okay, and there we go. So, what we're going to do is just make sure we've done ends of tailplanes, the rears, and everything else like that. Okay, and then what we can do is flip it over. And as I say, nice coat underneath absolutely everywhere, using the same principle, adjust to it, disappears, just like that wing. And as I say, very quickly, you'll see it coming back to life. So, here, what this will do, this will be the solid white colour, instead of it being quite faded. The only thing I am going to do is, this area here, this centre section in the back here, we're actually going to leave that and just go a very light pass afterwards, purely because that is a very heavily weathered area, and we want to keep, sort of retain some of that. And the leading edges of wings. This will give us our white look. Okay, if you get any type of spitting at all, check the end of your needle. Like there, we've got the white paint come off on my finger. So obviously we've got a bit running on. Okay, back down to the front. Remember to do your edges. receiver well and truly painted okay now if you've got any overspray or anything in those intakes now's the time to give them a quick little spray of white down there as I say hopefully it won't travel further enough back to get your blades 
for the first stage of the compressor wave, but uh, should be fine. So I'm just going to a little bit around these edges. That's it. We're almost out of paint. It's going to be a little bit with what I've got left just down in the middle there. And there we have it. That's roughly where we're going to stop because this will enable us then to really give us a nice basis for any weathering we do because obviously it's going to have a wash under here. It's still going to be quite busy considering we're going to be doing it as a uh, obviously an air display obviously in flight so we're not going to have any gear to worry but what we are going to have is a hard point down here with weapons on, centerline fuel tank and again on this side and then by the time we do the clam area down the back and all this metallic area it should be really really nice. So what we want to do now is leave this to totally dry off, totally go everywhere because we need to mask on top of it. So what we're going to do is leave this overnight, come back in the morning mask up all these white areas, protect those, make sure we're all happy and everything like that. Then we can come along with a light gold grey right the way over the top, okay, and then we can get it unmasked and start working our way through further weathering, through bleaching, post shading and things like that before we get on with the deckling. Okay, so there we go. As we can see, pre-shading coming through about the right level that we want. Now, this is obviously dependent on you and what you're going to do next. Some people might find that a little bit heavy. Others would want it a lot more sort of firm like that. Now, various things you can do with other colours is sort of fade panels. But because it's white, what we're going to do is a little bit of this in post-shading. With post-shading means that after it's all done, we're going to dirty it up just a little bit. So that will come later. So what we want to do now is protect this white coat from... Uh, all the other type of weathering we're going to do a little bit later on. So for that, basically I've got some 40mm tape and we've got some thinner 6mm to do the job to start with. First thing we want to protect is the tail. Now, if we just take an extremely long length like this. Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're just going to start at the rear. Okay, placing down. On just like that. Now the reason for doing far too much is so we can wrap it around the front without any affecting. So what we want to do is just take it right the way around. Just something like that. Okay, so we can just hold on to that because we can reuse it. Alright, and then what we want to do is make sure we're happy that it's down there so we can take these two extra bits we can pinch the top just to seal that in. Okay, and we just want to make sure we've got it nice. Nice line down the back here. Okay, one like that. And we just fold it over, take it to the top, and again on the other side. So we've got that sort of drop off that it tends to get. Down the back there, and again, you can usually stretch this stuff just a little bit. Okay, I think I just broke the fuel dump thing, but that's not a problem. We can stick that on afterwards, so we'll just hold it there. Then we're going to take some of our 40 mil, which is a habit of ripping as you're taking this off. Okay. So again, it's going to do a little bit too much. Now, if you're worried about peeling anyway, usual thing, guys. Backs of the hands. Okay, use the oils from your skin to help stop it. And then what you can do is literally just come along, place it so you've got a good overlap. Okay, and again, we're just gonna, we're gonna fall short just a little bit. Like so. And again, on your hands. Just go with the hairs and it won't rip your hairs out your arm. Okay, there we go, that's the tail, because obviously we're going to have the sun markings on this one for the sundowners. Okay, next big problem is these flap areas. Again, they're not a massive problem, so what we're going to do is we're just going to grab our little bit of 40 mil straight over the top, just like so. And then what we can do, depending on which area you want to do, you should be able to see the panel line in there. And that one by hooking underneath. Then if you're 
quite clever, you can just do the same on the reverse side. So it's going to go right the way over the top. And again, we can see where it's got to go. So it's a case of cutting that way. Making sure you're all joined up. Okay, and what I tend to do, fold them over just to protect them. And you can use this little bit if you like. And we're just going to take this round the back. So we've got quite a hard edge. So we've got the flap area done and we've got this edge in here. All right, so that one is all okay. Just make sure the corners are all pushed in. All right, so what I tend to do is pop a blade in there if you're not sure, just to make sure that they're all in there nice and flush. So we do the same on the other side. And then with this top area, he says, just looking for his white tack. So if you've got your white tack, okay, this is the oil-free version of blue tack, okay? So what you can do, usual thing, warm it up first. If you warm this stuff up, it's absolutely great. <clears throat> okay, and then what you can do, you can give this a softer edge to this. So what we're gonna do is take it from the the underside, okay. And we're going to push it quite aggressively around, so then we can make a cut in it like that. Push it around, and then what we're going to do, we've got to pull it around this intake system. All right. So what we're going to do is just going to start dragging it out with your fingers. And we're just trying to do a flat line for the moment. Okay. And what we've got to do, just pull it a little bit around. In fact, we're going to need just a little bit more than that. I haven't really got enough. Okay, just mould it, warm it all up. Because you don't want a massive, great, thick sausage going on under here. We just need a, a smaller line. All right, so again, we're just gonna need it, making sure it goes over the top of this air scoop because that's what happens with them. Okay, and then what we can do, we can sort of pull it down around to the front. So we get something like this, because what we're going to do, we're going to mask up all of this anyway, so don't worry too much about it. So I can just poke him back in there. We've got to put a little bit of foam down the intakes just to protect them. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the same for the other side, some more on here. Then we're going to put a little bit of tape just around absolutely everywhere. So it's the swing area, for instance, if you want to protect the entire thing, we're just going to go slightly over the top. Okay, so it's overhanging, so all the overspray doesn't wrap around everything else like that. Okay, just make sure you knead it nice and tight in where we've got the, the blue tack worm. It might be easier for, for you to do it the other way. Okay, to actually put that in second on here. All right, so it's something like that. And then what you can do, if you want to change the shape of the actual, this itself, what you can do is just give it a little bit of a, a push and a pull or something like this. Okay, if you don't like it particularly, you can just roll it back with your finger, push it down to give you a more flat, but perhaps if you want to get some curvy, wavy lines, things like that in there, depending on your particular aircraft you want to do, this one's pretty straightforward. Okay, but that's what you want to do. So what we're going to do is just give this a little bit of a nudge down, making sure it's all in. Okay, quite flat everywhere just like that one. So we get this one fully masked up and then we can get our first coat of paint onto it. So, okay, there we go, all masked up. A little bit round here. Um, not too worried about the front bit right at the very front, although saying that, uh, I might just put a tiny bit of tape just to cover this front just a little bit. Let's try and take care of that. Because obviously we've got the shark's mouth is gonna go around the front but it's going to, that's just here. So obviously we've got teeth and everything going on around here, but I still want it to be sort of somewhat as it would be before we come in and go round it 
everything else like that. So there we go, that's our situation we're in. Now, uh, paint choices. Uh, for those of you who follow my work a lot, you'll know my favorite color for doing this light gold gray is uh, the, ta the uh, Gun Sanyo stuff. Now this is their number H315, uh, it is the 16440. For those of you who sort of um, don't know how the federal standard colors work, Basically, the one at the beginning denotes it's a gloss. If it's a two, it's a satin. If it's a three, it's a flat. And then the, the colors are then after this one, in this case, is like six, which normally means it's sort of the gray colors and everything. And then 440 is the actual shade of it. And that's actually how they work through, so they're pretty easy. Good thing about this paint is it's perfect match for the color. Other people's don't tend to quite have that. I don't know the perfect type of color for it. Now, I've given this good shake up because to be honest, it had separated quite a bit. So what I'm just going to do is, I'm not too sure about using their paints with the uh, Vallejo airbrush clean, uh, airbrush stuff. So what I'm going to do is use Tamiya thinners because I know it works. Okay, traditionally in the old days, I've been using their enamel thinners to do it, but I'm trying to be a bit more healthy these days. So hence we're doing everything acrylic. Okay, so 50-50 mix to start with. Okay, going in. Now it's nothing massive. We're not gonna be flooding it or going to town. We're just trying to put on a nice smooth coat. As I say, it's about a 50-50 mix going on in here. All right, and as I say, you haven't got tons of places to do on here, so it shouldn't be too bad at all. So what we're gonna do, first of all, we check our spray pattern. Happy with that, we're just gonna start, first of all, in this 90 degree area between the fuselage and the wing. Gonna put quite a wet coat in there. Because then I can avoid it, because when you're doing that area, it tends to sort of get a problem, shall we say, with roughness and that. It's just where you get a, like, a vortex effect happening with your spraying and everything else. Again, very hot day today. So we're just gonna put on a nice, light coat, just to start with. Okay. And we're just trying to fade it down. We're not trying to paint here, we're just trying to blend in and fade this pre shading down. Okay. When we're looking a little bit faded, nothing massive because obviously we've got a couple of coats to do. We're going to run off and do somewhere else. So we'll go down around this tail area. Remember, you haven't got to do all the tail, it's all metally and everything down there. Okay, we're just getting a little bit foggy on with the old extractor. Okay, we're just working our way. Obviously, I don't want to shoot up the intake. We've got a little bit of foam halfway up there. So we're just trying to hide. Trying to keep 90 degrees to the sponge. So we get a nice even line going on down there. But again, we're just trying to spray it off. Remember to do all your canopy work. Remember, if it's looking wet, just shift, go off somewhere else for a moment. Again, these 90 degree areas, I tend to go in there with a nice heavy coat, then that way, when you're spraying, it should melt into itself, rather than drying. And same thing again, we want to go until we can't see the pre-shading and then we stop. Okay, and we're going to naturally let it come back. But you can probably see there, we've got a good mixture. Okay, go again. Looks heavy. Can't see the pre-shading and then stop. Okay, that's our first paint gone. But you can see this wing starting to come back to life again. All right. Not there. So again, exactly the same thing again. We're going to do another 50-50 mix. Even though I'm paint, I've got another pot, but I don't think we'll need it. 
Okay, just remember with this paint, a couple of things. First of all, don't handle it. You get this uh, eggshell effect with uh, these types of paints, with these guns paints. You think it's dry, you hold on to it with your finger, and then next thing you know, you leave a whacking great fingerprint in the paintwork because it's so soft. So what I tend to do is, like I'm doing here, we'll do a, a side holding a wing, then we'll move on to the tail where I can actually grab it, okay? And that's how we sort of work our way around these things. Gonna come up to the wing tip area. But with even your your airbrushing can be quite random. Okay, this wing perhaps a little bit strong, do you think? So we'll just give it a very light pass, quick pass right the way over. Tip of the tail, we've got to paint that as well. And there we go. So just make sure you make, you've got all the cockpit areas. Because what you don't want to do is what I call fade out. What I mean by fade out is that you're in a situation where perhaps you're painting up to a, a tape line like here, and then what happens is, is that you're coming along, it's looking great, and you sort of fade off. When you unmask it, you get a sort of a faded line. It needs to be a hard edge on this one, okay? So make sure you get plenty of paint, and you go right up in there with it. So I've just got to do this wing bit. So say, if you're looking too wet anywhere, then just pull away, okay? If it's looking too stark, and just give it another one. But remember, this is a gloss coat. And then what we're going to do, we are going to leave this for a good 24 hours before we even unmask it or do anything to this one. Okay, so that's, I'm happy with that finish. As I say, very few places you can grab this now. But there we go, that's our type of effect. We've got a little bit of roughness going down the back. So what I'm gonna do is not clean out the airbrush, okay? We're just gonna put a cover over the top of the airbrush and I might have to respray that. But apart from that, really happy how that is now. It looks very dark and creamy, but it's one of these weirdo colours because as soon as you unmask it with the white, it will lighten up and it will look absolutely spot on. Plus the fact we've got to do a little bit more weathering and post shading and everything that goes around with this particular one, but hopefully you can see. Came out really, really well, even in today's temperatures and everything else where it's very, very warm, no problem. The last little thing we've got to do is just around the front of the nose, just the underside of this nose. Quick pass around the canopies. Really happy how that one's come out. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a little trestle for it. And we're going to leave it now for a good 24 hours, totally go hard. Then we can unmask it, see exactly what we've got. If we need to do any touching up, any problems that we see, we can take care of it there and then. If not, next stage, getting on with the metal work at the rear.